Good evening, everybody. Matrix here, and here is my watch list for December 2nd. Uh, sorry, January 2nd, 2019. Excuse me. January 2nd, 2019. Uh, first day of the New Year's. Here we go. Uh, I'm very excited about tomorrow. I mean, if we're looking at the futures right now, it's major downgapping. I mean, like, wow. Basically, it's, uh, it's gapped down under its uh, previous short term uptrend. Right. Uh, this is probably what I've been talking about. Um, the overall market getting hammered back down uh, by inducing these uh, little pops and run ups. Right. Um, I think the smart money is going to come in and hammer it and we're going to uh, bring it down to this 240 level. Like my uh, prior watch list that I've been talking about to really test this bottom at 240, see if it's actually a real bottom, right? Or is uh, this little short term uptrend, or was it just uh, a reversal, or was it a retrace, right? Um, looking at this three months chart on the futures area, I mean, you can see that it's gapping down right now. Uh, if we were to zoom in a little bit, on the five minute chart, um, this is amazing. I mean, it's exactly what I'm looking for. I think it's gonna come back up a little bit and test this 2485 if possible. If not, then it just keeps going. Tomorrow is gonna be a fantastic day. Uh, just from looking at this, I, I already have that gut feeling going into the market tomorrow. So what does this actually mean uh, in relation to the SPY, right? Um, Let's take a look at the SPY right now. I mean, we have this short-term uptrend. The past two days, we've been in this uh, in this kind of consolidation area, right? Um, let's mark this off for you so you can see it a little clearly, okay? So the past two days, we're in this uh, little consolidation area, and it really depends on whether the market can break out of this area to decide what to do on this next leg. So here, let me make this box a little clearer okay um and for this gap down currently uh we are looking at a gap down to about 248 right now in relation to the futures so what i want to see is a gap down tomorrow a little pop back up into maybe this 249.50s 249 area and then slam snap that snap this short-term uptrend and then we get this massive leg coming down uh potentially an all-day fader tomorrow uh bringing the whole market down to the 240 to test and see if this is actually a true bottom or uh just a retracement right um i i with the way it's gapping down right now i just don't see the market coming back up at all testing the highs here all right so what i'm looking at is a gap down a pop back up into this trend line and then fail and that's the overall uh thesis i'm gonna go with with the market in itself so moving along let's bring in some uh some tickers that i'll be watching and trading tomorrow first up we have sq um SQ tomorrow is going to be on my main watch. As you can see on the daily chart here, let me move the clock out of the way. On the daily chart, SQ has a very concise downtrend line ever since uh, we had this market correction and now entering into this bear territory, right? Um, with this kind of uh, daily chart action, to me, first of all, it's meeting up into this downtrend line and it looks like it's going to reject and come down okay uh the daily chart in itself looks like it's about to roll over just like the market right uh what i want to talk about is the 55 area here uh this is first of all a key psychological whole number and it's it's uh the immediate support right uh, as you can see around here on the 55 55 50 area on the intraday chart 15 minute chart once this snaps this whole support area snaps i think it's going to induce some panic and uh whoever bought long around uh this area here they're going to panic out and they're going to start selling and uh my first target is to bring this thing down to the 5250s and then uh essentially bring it all the way down to the well next up probably the 51 to 50 area right 
uh, if we're going to have a super, super leg down. Um, what I want to see tomorrow on the SQ, um, it's that it follows the market. It's going to gap down tomorrow, and that's my thesis. It's going to gap down, uh, preferably under 55. And then I want to see a cover pop at the open, back right into this resistance area, and then fail from there. Uh, from there, I'm going to look for that uh, little double topping action or uh, lower high and uh, get short and basically ride this out all day. SQ is going to be on one of my main watches. Next up, we have Apple. Apple is uh, kind of the same as SQ. I mean, if you're looking at the daily chart uh, pattern that we're forming right now, um, Apple also has this short-term uptrend line, which uh, incidentally it snapped. I think this massive gap down in the market here, it's going to induce panic. So uh, I want to see this gap down under this, uh, hmm, well, Gap down under 158 for sure because we're at 158.10. I want to see it gap down under 158. If possible, under 157, that would be even better, right? As you can see, 157 is a key support area that for the past uh, couple of days. So if it gaps down, prior support now becomes resistance. I want to see it pop back up into 157 and get short from there. Now, the first target on Apple is 156. Okay, so once I get short, I want to see it come down to 156. And then uh, from there, I'll probably pay myself. Uh, the reason why I picked 156 is this, this right here. Okay, um, this to me looks like a key, key level. So if I were to be able to bring it down to 156, I paid myself and then let the rest ride. Ideally, I want to see the stock go back down to 150. If we were gonna have a massive leg, but uh, a move like this might take the whole day. So uh, my my thesis is to try to get in uh, as high as possible. Obviously, uh, looking for that pop out the open. Uh, we'll be looking at 157, 157.5, 158, and uh, we'll be looking for those marks to uh, reject and uh, come down and bring it right back down, right? Because it's the same pattern as SQ right now. Okay, so uh, that's Apple. Next up, we have Roku. I love Roku. I mean, uh, we, I've been trading Roku uh, or, or watching Roku for the past few days, right? Um, this kind of retracement is uh, interesting to me, but as you see on the daily chart, it's the same as Apple and uh, as SQ that I mentioned previously, right? So we are going to gap down. I want to see ideally that it gaps down under if possible i like to see it gap down under 30 right but if it doesn't if it gaps down even under 30 50 which is a key key area here as you can see on 30 50 it tested a few times for the past few days um this is prior support it's going to gap down from there i'm going to look for a pop back up into this 30 50 area and then uh, fade it all the way back down and uh see if we can test these lows here uh, 29 is very key so that's going to be my first target and then uh, I'm going to pay myself from there let's see if I can bring it down to 2750 I don't know how much of a panic we could get right but uh, personally I think tomorrow is uh, the day it's a great day to be shorting tomorrow in my opinion so Roku and then we have uh, NVIDIA NVIDIA is once again, same chart pattern, as you can see, um, there's a theme to the stocks I picked tonight uh, with the gap down, because uh, basically these stocks are starting to show signs of rolling over, right? Um, ideally, I want to see a gap down under this massive green candle here, um, which is 133.30, okay? So on the intraday chart, I'm going to mark that off and show you. Well, the 133 level, uh, maybe even, yeah, 133.30 level right here. Um, I want to see it gap down under, pop back up, test, make a lower high, and then hammer it in. And uh, daily first target, I want to try to hit the 130 area first for the three points. And then I also want to let this thing ride as an all-day fader. And my ideal target, if possible, 
bring it all the way down to 125. And I know looking for this 8 to 10 points is, uh, is quite a lot, but I think it's possible. I mean, if the whole market is going to be induced into a panic area and it's just going to sell off, uh, we might be able to pull off one of these days where uh, we ride the short all day. So that's what I'm looking for, um, NVDA. And finally, Netflix. Now, Netflix is the only ticker that doesn't have that uh, rolling over action. And the reason is because Netflix has a lot of positive catalysts going for it. Um, on January 17th, Netflix is coming into uh, their earnings, right? So today is the second. So people are starting to be interested in Netflix and they might be starting to buy into earnings already. Uh, secondly, um, Netflix also came out with a little bit of news catalyst saying that they just hired Activision's CFO to be their very own. So Activision ATVI basically fired their own CFO and uh, Netflix just poached them and hired them and uh, they got a new CFO. So that in itself is good news for the company. They have a new CFO coming in. And of course, uh, I also read the news article of how uh, Netflix is phasing out Apple Pay or using um, Apple Pay for their uh, App Store downloads or something like that. Um, they're basically cutting out Apple and saving some money when people are downloading Netflix off the App Store. Okay, so um, for that in itself, Netflix is going to save some money and uh, that's going to go to uh, their fundamental sites, uh, adding to their cash flow. And uh, that's also positive news. Okay. Um, as far as Netflix go, I think tomorrow I'm going to be looking for kind of a gap down, obviously, because the whole market's going to gap down. Um, I'm going to look for a gap down around this 265, 262 area, right? And then at the open, I'm going to look for that rip. Um, I think people, because of the positive catalyst going into Netflix, I think people are going to try to buy in as cheap as possible and they're going to cause the stock to rip. However, with the market conditions, I don't think the Netflix stock itself can get above 270 tomorrow because we have a very apparent top here. And if it touches 270, that would be a, a very ideal double top to get short into. So um, perhaps uh, opening sideways or a gap down under this uh, 265 area, fail into 262.50, um, which is right here. Right, And then we should see a pop back up and then down again. So that's my thesis on Netflix. Um, what I want to talk about on Netflix, though, Netflix has a lower float and um, its candles can move uh, pretty, pretty wide. I mean, the range in itself, I mean, if you're taking a look at this candle right here from the highs to the lows, this is two, it's a two point candle. Right, so uh, if you're playing Netflix, you really need to size accordingly. Right, for me, um, I'll probably play a maximum of twenty shares, right? Because uh, just because knowing that with twenty shares, if I get caught in one of these candles, I'm losing forty bucks. Right, uh, to me, forty dollars is a lot of money. I don't know to anybody else out there who have a little bit more capital than I do, obviously. 20 shares is nothing, but what I'm trying to say is you really got to size properly into using a share size that you would be comfortable on losing at least $2 on each candle on, right? I mean, look at this candle. This is a $1.50 candle, right? So Netflix can move. It's disgusting. It's, uh, it can move a lot. So size probably, uh, maximum I'm going to use is 20 shares, uh, maybe ride this thing up and down uh, 10 points. Um, and that's what I'll be looking for. So Netflix will be on my watch, uh, probably on a side watch because my main watch is going to be Square, uh, NVDA, and, and uh, Apple. So that's it for my watch list. I hope you guys enjoyed what you watch. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe. Uh, if you haven't already, 
check out that uh, newest video I posted out on um, my 2019 resolution, stocks uh, trading resolution that I did. I basically did a little chit chat session with uh, one of my trading buddies, Nuke, there. So check that out and I'll see you guys all bright and early tomorrow. Thank you.